All right. Hey, Mark, it's good to be with you. We are in north of Atlanta at the um, Royal Oak Invitational. It's a Friday evening steak cook-off association, SCA cook, sitting here next to the first place grand champion trophy. And we just finished steak selection. Uh, and so it would be good to talk a little bit about SCA, yeah, what yeah. The, uh, the process is, how the sport works and uh, go from there. So we finished steak selection a minute ago. Cooks uh, will randomly draw poker chips out of a bag that determines their order for selection. Uh, they will then line up in numerical order and they'll pick one steak that the promoter provides. And they'll go one steak uh, ascending order and then they'll flip and pick one, sending, uh, one steak descending order. Uh, and then from there they'll leave and go back to their cook site and They'll leave from there and they'll go back to their cook site and prep their steaks. And they roughly have an hour, hour and a half until turn in. SCA has a 30 minute turn in window. They will take a, a box that they've been given, white styrofoam box, put one steak in there uncut, and they'll take it to a turn in table. From there, the steak goes into a cut table in the judge's room. The steak is cut in half, 50 50 and then it goes to the first judge. Uh, that judge will open the box, give a score based on appearance and based on doneness. Uh, they will then take a cut sample off the spinalis end and they'll taste it and they'll judge and score based on texture, taste, and overall impression. And then the box travels down the table to the fifth judge and then from there it goes to the scoring uh, for input. Uh, SCA is unique because it uh, utilizes a double blind system. So when awards are called, the, um, the contestants, the representatives, the judges, nobody really knows whose steak they tasted. Uh, they just have a number. Um, when awards are called, uh, there is no contestant's name that's called. The contestants, after they leave the turn and table, have a ticket that has a number on it and that number is how awards are called. So the representative, the promoter, nobody really knows who the winner is until that number is called. So very important to keep that ticket or a picture copy of that ticket. That's how you will identify the winner. Uh, the SCA cooks are very relaxed. Uh, usually they're a one day event. They are typically a $100, $150 entry fee. A lot of times first place will win $1,000. And so they've become very weighted. Yeah, so we talked about that earlier. SCA scores are equally weighted. The judges will give a score up to a maximum of 10 for taste, texture, doneness, and overall impression. Hang on, let me back up. Let me, let me make sure I said that right. So judges will give scores up to a 10 based on appearance, doneness, texture, and overall impression. Taste, the judges can give up to a 10.9. So the taste scores do have decimal points in them. And a lot of times that decimal point is what separates cooks uh, within a contest. Sometimes you'll see two or three points, five points that'll separate just a few placings. Okay, so SCA does certify judging classes that are held throughout the country. You can find those on steakcookoffs.com. Go on there, there's usually a judging portal, and then you can search and look for upcoming judging classes. And so judges will go through that one day class. Uh, a lot of times it's held by just a few people that are teaching those, the founders of SCA or a few select other folks. And then from there you can be certified and judge. They also have a process if you've judged more than 28 events, you're considered a prime judge. So the classic uh, aging or dry aging, wet aging of a steak is ideal at 28 days. And so 28 was selected as a number to be a certified prime judge. There are five judges at a table. And so for a contest this size, there will be two, sometimes three tables of judges. So you'll need 10 or 15. You do have judges that will come that will work the turn-in table. You'll have judges that will come that will be the cutter, that will run and enter the scores and do other things. So a typical contest may have 15 or 20 judges. Ten of those may be tasting judges. Some may be doing some other duties. SCA is also very popular with their ancillary categories. And throughout this year, I saw tacos, grilled cheese, um, I'm trying to think what other uh, ancillaries we had. 
talk as far as applying to be able to come to the event. Yeah, so to apply to be able to come to the event, you would go on to then the contest page and sign up as a judge there. So this this selection process really happens on site. A, a, um, an organizer may cap the number of judges that they need for an event, but on site, if they only need 10 tasting judges, then it'll be a random draw who those 10 are. I'm thinking through, I know we're talking kind of dialogue. I know barbecue sometimes, they'll select judges to come to an event. A lot of times with SCA, the judges can go on and sign up, and then it'll be a random on site who's tasting steak, maybe who's tasting ancillary. You'll have some who may volunteer for other duties based on experience. What categories are in ancillary? This year we saw Bloody Mary. We saw anything taco, um, anything with bacon, grilled cheese, multiple meat categories. You could have a seafood category, you could have appetizer, you could have chicken wings, you could have dessert. Really it's up to the promoter. And there are some times where the promoter may have a sponsor that provides ingredients. For example, tomorrow there's a contest in Virginia. Wampler Sausage is one of the promoters and they will provide sausage and it's anything with that sausage as an ancillary. And so that happens. Okay, open her up. Can you talk about what's going on, please? Pardon me? Can you talk about what's going on? Okay. He's, he's turning his steak, steak in. in. Okay. We're just look at make sure there's steak. no strings, yeah, toothpicks, right. or anything yes, left in there. Sir, there's no strings, toothpicks, nails, hammers, skewers, anything in there? No, nope, no. Nope. No form matter. Okay. Not that we know of. Okay, dokie. Okay. If you'll close that up for us, and if you'll sign this ticket. And then also he asked if, if, it, if is it in the box the way you want it, because that's for the, the way they're going to cut it. No, then make sure you don't lose the ticket, because that's the only way we know who owns this steak. That would be you, sir. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Thank you, much. Thank you, sir. Stop by. I just solemnly swear. To objectively and subjectively. To objectively and subjectively. Evaluate each barbecue meat. Evaluate each barbecue meat. Hey. That is presented to my eyes. That is presented to my eyes. My nose. My hands. And my palate. I accept my duty to the DA. First annual Royal Oaks Invitational Barbecue Contest. First annual Royal Oaks Invitational Barbecue Contest. Judge. 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 <laughs> so that's true. So true. Justice. 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 Excellent barbecue. And the American way of life. My name's Kerry Bond and I'm from Stockbridge, Georgia. I'm a Kansas City barbecue judge, member number 21496. I got my certification in 2007. I've had the privilege of judging 201 contests. It's the greatest organization in the world. I like to say that Interstate Highway took Back Roads America off the map. Kansas City Barbecue Society and the contest that it sponsors put the map back the way it was. You get to go to the greatest places, meet the finest people. It's a great extended family, and I'm just proud to be a part of it. Now, where'd you hit 200? I hit 200 in Savannah, Georgia, two weeks ago. Where are we today? What? Where are we today? We are at the Royal Oak First Invitational Contest in Roswell, Georgia. Got teams from all over the country here, great teams cooking, and it's sponsored by Royal Oak. Most of these teams are Royal Oak sponsors, uh, sponsored by Royal Oak at some point during the contest. So it's a, as I said, it's a great extended family. Now you great sponsors. Go judge, right? I'm going down the hall and be a table captain today for this contest. And might even get to judge some of the barbecue a little bit later with Kids Q. 
I liked entry number three. It had a great texture, great tenderness, and the flavor was spot on. And the least? The least was entry number one. Um, tenderness was not quite as tender as I'd like, and sauce was just a little too much for me. I like number three, too. It was really good, and I like the flavor of the barbecue sauce. And number two was kind of peppery for me, but I liked really all of them, really. <laughs> My favorite was number one, uh, good taste, good texture. Number three on me was dry, uh, but overall pretty good chicken. I was really impressed with the number of the sauces, whether they had layers of flavor. So certain spiciness would come through um, after you let it kind of sit on your palate for a little while. Um, also, you don't see the drum presentation as much. I thought number four did a really good job um, with, uh, with the texture there. Uh, my number three, the skin was a little on the thick side, um, so I had to rate it down a little bit from... <clears throat> from a texture perspective. Uh, and I agree that number one was a little heavily sauced, but I think the meat was very, were very flavorful. I thought the appearance on all five were very good. I like number one and four, moisture and taste. And number five was my least. It, had, it was undercooked and bloody. Uh, agreeing with most everyone else here, the appearance was really good. I liked the flavor on all five. However, I would say number one is my favorite because I did like the flavor of the sauce. The tenderness was spot on. Uh, my least favorite was probably number four, uh, although three, four, and five all had kind of rubbery, not bite-through skin, so I had to count down for that. I'd say overall the, uh, the ribs were excellent. Uh, the first entry that we received was uh, definitely a standout. I love the sweetness and the tenderness to it. Did an excellent job with the with the cook. Uh, my least was probably number five. Uh, a little bit, not that it was totally bland, but it was on the bland side of the flavor spectrum. Uh, the cook was good on it, but uh, flavor profile just didn't quite compete with the other five. Uh, my favorite was uh, number two. Um, it had a nice pull from the bone, and the flavor profile was great. And uh, my least favorite, unfortunately, was the first rib where they cut the meat too close to the bone, and the rest of the meat on the other side was really dry. This was an extremely tough category to judge. They were very close. My favorite was number five. Uh, pull from the bone nice. Had plenty of meat on there for the cut. Uh, uh, notable on number three, it had a different sweet flavor that I had that was different from all the other ribs. Uh, I liked them all. I would say my favorite was number five. Uh, again, the tenderness, it was moist. The flavor was really um, good from the first bite to the, to the back of my mouth, to my tongue. It was really great. Uh, my least favorite was number one. Again, all these um, entries were really close, but um, number one was my least favorite. Again, all five entries, as everyone else has said, were extremely nice. Uh, my favorite was number one. Had a great smoky uh, flavor to it. Uh, very tender. Didn't pull completely off the bone, but it was well cooked. Uh, didn't have a least favorite as far as flavor goes, but I did have entry number two. Uh, my uh, sample was overcooked. It just fell completely off the bone, uh, which for judging is not the best thing. But uh, overall, great entries. That was a pretty balanced plate overall. Uh, my favorite was num number two. It would, had uh, good tenderness and balanced flavor. Uh, if I had to give a, a least favorite, it would be five. It was a little dry, and it had uh, 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 an over pepper, over pepper flavor. I agree. I think number two was the, uh, the best of the five. Uh, also, I think that number five was, I thought, a little bit on a dry side. 
Uh, but overall, it's a very good presentation. Um, I thought they were all relatively uh, well done, but nothing really st stood out horribly. Um, probably my favorite was number four uh, for the taste, and least favorite was number one, which I thought was pretty bland. Well, thank you for having me here. It was a great contest. Uh, number two was my favorite overall. It was just good on taste, texture, and appearance. Number five was a little dry as it was number one. But overall, this was really some good eating. Yes, I really like number two. And to me, number three tasted like Christmas. Number one was my favorite. Number five was chewy. Uh, number two was mushy, overcooked. All right, first of all, some of the best bar best brisket I've had in years. Um, my favorite was probably number three. My least favorite was number one. It's a little too salty and just slightly overdone. That's about it. Favorite, least favorite, why? Um, the first one was my least favorite as it was a little salty. And uh, the third one was uh, the most, most moist and tender. Yes, my favorite was the first one. It had, it had a little better beef flavor than the rest of them did. And my least favorite was the third one. It was still a little tight, like a little snappy, like it wasn't cooked long enough. Uh, my favorite was the fourth one. Uh, it had a nice beef flavor to it. Uh, great tenderness. Uh, my least favorite was number three. It was a little underdone. Needed to be cooked a little longer and uh, I just didn't enjoy the flavor on that one. My favorite was number four. <clears throat> I loved the taste. It had a good smoke flavor. Uh, my least favorite was number five, which um, the taste was a little bit bland to me and um, seemed to be a little bit too soft. My favorite was number one. It had a buttery taste and a great pull to it. My least favorite was number three. It was kind of tight. Thank <laughs> you.